propaganda sheet. And it says, on Saturday, 500 people protested corporate greed on Central Avenue. Let's <laughs> 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 say that the Occupy movement has already accomplished a lot. And, and um, the way that it's accomplished a lot is by communicating moral commitment. That's what these occupations were the, the people sleeping in the parks or the people uh, going to the going to, to the caucuses. That's a, that's a, it's a statement of personal commitment on, on a moral question. The, the essential moral question is this, the injustice of the imbalance of the system. That's the essential thing. So I think Occupy has already won, in a way. And that the strategy, whatever the strategy was, it was the right strategy because it was effective, you know? Um, however, now the question is, what now? Yes. And, and um, uh, perhaps I can offer um, a few ideas based on my story, um, my history, uh, and certain conclusions that I've come off of, that I've, I've developed off that history, that may be of value to you. Um, and, and, but, but mostly, tonight, I'm interested in discussion. And, and people raising whatever's on their mind, and I'll comment. And I know other people here will comment, and and, and let's so so let's just think about a, 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 a large discussion group. Okay? And um, um, uh, I have no time limit. I have to be in Des Moines at seven tomorrow night, so <laughs> I'm inside this room. For that. <laughs> but, uh, um, so I'm not running. I'm not rushing off anywhere. So uh, anybody. Who, so let's let's just think about the discussion now. Um, I think the, the most useful thing yeah. might be if I um, um, uh, offer you a very short version of um, my story, what, what I was in, I've been involved, what I was involved in, let's say from '65 to '78, '77, um, and 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 then I can I can summarize after that my, the next 30 or five years in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is an interesting. I, I, I've been involved in all kinds of organizing, labor organizing, environmental organizing, uh, anti-nuclear um, uh, weapons, anti-nuclear mining, waste dumping. I've been involved in um, um, Native American solidarity organizing. And so it, 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 I've spent most of my life since uh, I was 18 uh, being involved in organizing. So that's really what and I think that's that's the operative word that we're aiming towards is organizing. How do we organize? And notice that the Tea Party got organized very quickly, and that its organizing grew to power very quickly. And so um, um, and the question is, is how did they do it? And also, uh, what can we learn? And what are our goals? And what are our strategies? These are all on the table. Okay, so. Just be thinking about questions. Oh, and the other thing I want to say is, uh, I was a classroom teacher for, thir for uh, close to 30 years in a community college, 26 years, but then I taught at other environments at the university. And I'm used to um, being interrupted. So, <laughs> uh, you, know, I, you know, I love feedback. And, and if I'm saying something, somebody says, oh, no, man. You're wrong. You know, that's cool. That's fine. You know, or somebody has a question. So if anybody wants to say anything at any point, just go right ahead. It's fine. Um, okay, I'm 18 years old. A, a nice Jewish kid from Maplewood, New Jersey, the suburbs, um, uh, uh, 14 miles from Manhattan, um, an upper middle class or a middle class town. Um, my parents were making the transition from lower middle class to upper middle class during my childhood, and later they moved and up the, up the hill. But um, um, I, I, I crossed the Hudson River to Columbia University, and what do I find? Well, let me get the, let me get the dates. Do you mind if I write? Um, oh, please do. I'm a visual learner myself, <laughs> and so I'll write, I'll write the date that I, I turned 
18 on June 2nd, 1940, uh, no, that's what I'm for, uh, 1968, 1938. And I, I had barely known, and I, on that day I went and, and, and registered for the draft. Because that's what all the guys did. And my, my brother was in the military at the time. Uh, he had taken ROTC in college, and he was an officer. Uh, he was doing procurement uh, for the Vietnam War, even though the Vietnam, uh, from 63 to 65, they were, they, were, they were building up for the war. He didn't know it, but he, that, he later figured that it was, the war was coming. And um, in March and April of 68, uh, the United States invaded Vietnam with main force troops. Um, that was the beginning of the early phase of the war, which was advised <coughs> And, and, and covert operations. And then they moved into just throwing the soldiers in. And, and within a year, um, they had 100,000. And by the end of the next year, 250,000. And by the end of three years, they had a half a million. So the beginning of the, the, the same, uh, it, it would be analogous to um, March of, 19, of 2003, when the United States invaded uh, Iraq with main force troops. They invaded in March and, and April with main force troops. But I didn't particularly notice it. Because I wasn't that into what was going on. In September, when I got to Columbia University, the first people I saw were people who had set up tables out in the Central Plaza area and were giving out information. Yes? You're talking about 68 or Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. I must be. I must be jet lagged. I must be. I'm 47. I mean, this is all ancient history. Do you realize for people our age, this history is about as long ago as World War One was to us when we were kids. Which, which, which at that time, I thought World War I was totally irrelevant. It was like ancient history. And now Vietnam must be ancient history to you kids. You know? But, but, you know, but, but, but you're not so young. Uh, well, I know you don't think Okay, any, any 18 year olds here? In 18, 19? In 19? Is Vietnam ancient history or? It, it isn't. Uh, this doesn't mean, this means something else. I don't know what it is. This, I, what is it? This well, people are still suffering from Agent Orange, and like I know a person's dad who has like cancer from Agent Orange, so it's not as like... Right, there are Vietnam vets around who are still suffering. Yeah. 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 What's that? Hollywood, yeah. World War One was, was uh, just, when, I'll just tell you this, when I was a kid, in the 60s and 50s, World War One was like, could have been the Civil War. It was that kind of, you know. Although lately, uh, thinking about all the effects of World War One and how it's coming back, especially in, in uh, uh, the Balkans and stuff like that, we can talk about that. But, um, anyway, <laughs> let, thank you very much. We're back in 65. I'm 18 years old. Uh, in March and April, they invade. In September, I get to Columbia. I meet these kids who are protesting the war. And they're learning about, they're teaching about the war, and they're learning about the war. See, we didn't learn about the war in our classes. We had to teach ourselves. Because the classes don't deal with things like contemporary wars, or, or, or even, even what, what, what some of the kids were talking about was imperialism. That was an absolute no-no in our classes. You would never hear that at Columbia University. The story of American imperialism. Um, a lot of these, these, these people, well, I, I just thought they were the coolest people I've ever seen. And I, and I wanted to be one of them. And I wanted to join that club, you know. 